Hey, Lashy Kids and Driving Mutants. I'm Lady Shasha, Mistress of the Snark. And today we're going back to the 80s to talk about Witchboard. This review was actually requested by Sean Harrington a while ago. Thanks for the request, Sean. This starts out at a party where Linda, played by Tony Katane, who for those of us who grew up in the 80s is most known for this. She actually made Witchboard before she made the White Snake music video, but they both came out around the same time, so the music video ended up being excellent promo for the movie. Anyway, they're all at a party debating the existence of spirits. Linda's new boyfriend Jim and her old boyfriend Brandon clearly do not like each other. Side note, Jim's friends are so annoying, especially the dude bro who keeps looking over his sunglasses. It's nighttime, you're indoors, just take them off. You look like a douche canoe. Brandon decides that he can prove that spirits exist by using the Ouija board with Linda to contact a little boy named David who passed away the same day that that Ouija board was made. At first, the spirit comes to the board who's not David, so they stop. But they try again, and they end up contacting David. Jim acts like a complete and total jerk, which angers the spirit of David. Careful, Jim. You're upsetting David. What's he gonna do? Haunt me? David, are you all right? Yeah, he's all right. He's just a little dead, that's all. Shut up, Jim! David, are you all right? Yeah, maybe he's late. The last flight back to limbo. Prompting him to flatten Brandon's tires. By the way, Brandon's place is the ideal 80s apartment. Mixing pastels with black leather? This movie does not waste time getting to the carnage. Remember Sunglass Bro? He gets dealt with first. You know that. Employment means nothing to me, pal. <laughs> when I say carnage, I just mean deaths. This movie is not gory, but the death scenes are very effective. This movie is what I call slumber party horror which is a step up from gateway horror. In my opinion, gateway horror is horror for children, like your first horror movie to get you into horror, something like Gremlins or Arachnophobia, where slumber party horror is more suitable for middle schoolers or young teenagers. I put this in that category along with movies like Mirror Mirror and Wish Upon. Maybe it's just my nostalgic mind thinking of these movies this way because when I watched Mirror Mirror and Witchboard, I was middle school age and I caught them on cable TV, either on cable TV or, on, or they were VHS rentals. I can't remember which, but I remember I was around that age when I saw these movies. These types of movies are great for building up your horror muscles. They're the type of movies that make you feel like a big kid because you can watch them by yourself alone in the dark and not get too scared. Linda does something that you're never supposed to do. Use the Ouija board alone. This causes the spirit to target anyone who even comes into contact with Linda. As the spirit continues to mess with people, Brandon calls on Zarebeth, played by Kathleen Wilhot, to exercise the spirit. She's a spiritual medium who likes to make horrible jokes. I would have loved to cosplay as Zarebeth, but I couldn't handle the jingle jangle jangle of that jacket. Fun fact, I have ADHD hard body karate, and the sounds of jingle jangle jingling can often overstimulate and irritate the ever-loving soul of neurodivergent people such as myself. It's upsetting me in my home, girl. I still would love to make the jacket just without all the little noisy parts. 
The spirit gets Zarebeth in what's probably the best kill of the movie. If I entertained you, made you smile, or helped you pass the time, please consider supporting this channel so that I can do that more. Horror channels often get suppressed and demonetized, but you can help in three ways. By pledging a monthly contribution on Patreon, sending a one-time tip using your preferred financial app, or you could help for free by liking and commenting for the algorithm, and most importantly, sharing this video on your social media. Thank you so much. Linda falls under the spell of the evil spirit and this forces Jim and Brandon to work together to try to defeat the evil. They actually used to be childhood friends before they both dated Linda and stopped talking to each other for two years. Watching this back as an adult, I'm noticing some character elements that are really cool. We get to see Jim go from being very immature and jerky to more serious and conscientious. We see Brandon go from being condescending and snobby to more grounded and caring. They eventually become friends again and have each other's back when defeating this evil spirit. I won't tell you how this movie ends because every day someone new is discovering which board. And I want you to still enjoy that ride. As I was watching this, I thought the location looked really cool. Old mansions that have been turned into apartments are always kind of cool to me. Unless they're haunted. The house featured in this film is the same one in Waxwork and Willard. It's called the Higgins Verbeck Hirsch Mansion in Windsor Square. That's a mouthful. Also, this movie is called Witchboard instead of Ouija because they didn't want that smoke with Parker Brothers. They still ended up having to pay out $50,000 for featuring the actual Ouija board in the movie. Speaking of Ouija boards, the writer-director of this, Kevin Tinney, was inspired by The Exorcist to make a movie that centered around the Ouija board and the concept of progressive entrapment. There's a cool shout-out to The Exorcist. In one scene, Jim is thrown through a window and it looks like this. See how the camera follows him down to the ground? I think it's meant to emulate this shot from The Exorcist, where also the camera follows him straight down to the ground. Check out the camera work, it's really cool, which was made to pay homage to this shot from Psycho. I love it when horror writers and directors study the classics. As you can tell, I really recommend Witchboard as an enjoyable 80s movie with a really good character-driven story. At the time of this review, Witchboard was available on AMC+, Con TV, Freevee, Plex, Pluto TV, Screenbox, Tubi, Amazon Prime, and although it's not listed on here, it's also on Shudder. So basically everywhere. But like I always say, don't take my word for it, watch it for yourself. Just because I love something doesn't mean you won't hate it, and just because I hate something doesn't mean you won't love it. Have you seen Witchboard? What are some of your favorite slumber party horrors? Let me know in the comments. Until next time. Special thank you to my patrons. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Reminder to new and returning Lashkey kids, don't forget to follow me on your preferred social media platform and check the community tab on YouTube for some fun extras. By the way, here are some other videos you might like.